Hey guys, today we're going to go through a practical exercise involving statics. Last time we learned about Newton's first law uh, and the idea of free body diagrams and the way that we can use first law and free body diagrams to analyze what's happening to things that aren't moving. That's what we mean by statics, the physics of things that are in equilibrium. Okay, so uh, here we have a diagram here and uh, need to explain what this is. So what this is, is a, uh, um, a bridge which is installed, we'll say, on a, in a hotel lobby. And the architects want to keep the floor clear, so they're going to hang these, this bridge, actually this combination of bridges, from the ceiling by these long steel rods. So the idea is you have a steel rod, which is firmly attached to the ceiling, it's hanging down, and then you have a block attached to the, to the steel rod. And sitting on that block is the bridge. Uh, and these bridge go like from the, the fourth floor uh, rooms in one wing of the hotel across the lobby to the fourth floor, fourth floor rooms in the other wing of the lobby. So people can just walk from one end of the hotel to the other without having to come downstairs. Uh, and then this one is the bridge that's on the second floor, connecting the second floor wing to the other second floor wing with the bridge going across. So we have one bridge hanging below another bridge, and they're both hanging from the ceiling. And in both for both bridges, you have a, a block firmly attached to the steel rod, and then the bridge structure is sitting on that block. Okay. Now, for the purpose of this, we're going to say that for this individual rod, the uh, this bridge weighs 10,000 newtons, and this bridge down here also has a weight of 10,000 newtons. And what we're going to do is we're going to walk through and we're going to figure out the forces that are acting on the different parts of this system. So as you go through this, feel free to pause the video briefly while you come up with the answer. Um, it's a YouTube, so you're, you're able to do that easily. Okay, so yeah, as we go through here, we wanna think in terms of net forces acting on different objects in this and balancing forces. So sometimes there's forces acting in more than one way or sometimes there's combinations of many forces. Anyway, so here we go. First question is, how much weight is hanging from the ceiling? I'll help you with this one. Uh, we're going to assume that the hardware itself, the, like the rod itself, has an insignificant weight. So this rod is supporting 10,000 newtons from this bridge and 10,000 newtons from this bridge. So the total is going to be 20,000 newtons. No surprise. Okay. Now, how much weight is being supported by this block right here? You can pause it if you need to, but here we're coming to the answer right now. 10,000 newtons. Not surprising. Next question is, how much weight is being supported by the steel rod above the bridge? Again, pause it for a moment if you need to. We'll move forward right about now. There it is, 10,000 newtons again, no surprise. Now, how much weight is being supported by this block? Um, pause it if you need to. We'll start again, and here's the answer. 10,000 newtons again, because this block only has this bridge sitting on it. Okay, moving on up, how much weight is being supported by the steel rod up here? This hopefully will be pretty easy, 20,000 newtons. And then again, as we saw, then the 20,000 newtons is being transferred to the ceiling. So that's, that's how all the forces stack up on this. Now, suppose we're building this thing, and remember, this is like the second floor, and this is like the fourth floor, and this is the ceiling. So we're talking about a 50, maybe a 60 foot long steel rod here. And those things are kind of expensive, and they're difficult to drive through city streets. This hotel is in the middle of a city, and uh, driving a 60 foot steel rod and getting it around corners to the construction site is a little bit challenging. So the builder has this great idea that to save money and to make it easier to transport the materials, they will buy two short rods instead of one long one, and they will assemble it in this way. Okay, so a short rod from the ceiling to the first bridge, and then another short rod from the second first bridge to the second bridge. And the question that we have is, is this going to make any difference? Okay, now, a little bit of uh, uh, background on this. Uh, engineers tend to always build in a margin of error. So if the engineer believes that uh, this block is only going to have to support 10,000 newtons, they will design the block to be able to support like 15,000 newtons. They'll give themselves like a 50% margin of error. So the engineer does all the math, figures out that the most weight this thing will ever have to hold is 10,000 newtons. That's the bridge and people on it and potted plants, snow or whatever. Um, 
figures that it will only ever have to hold 10,000 newtons. And then they design and build it to hold 15,000 newtons. So there's a safety margin so the thing doesn't collapse. Okay, so these blocks are designed to support 15,000 newtons. And the question before us is, this design change, is it going to make a difference in whether or not this thing holds together? All right, so I want you to pause the video here and decide uh, to think about this and try to, to try to analyze this. Okay, so pause it. Now I'm going to uh, go forward a little bit and start giving you some hints in case you're stuck. So here we go, moving forward. All right, think about how much weight this block is supporting. Right, and again, pause it and think if that if that uh, is going to make a difference. Is it only ten thousand newtons that's being supported by this block, or is it a different amount? Okay, I'm going to move forward to the next one, but I would like you to think about think this through as best you can before you go to the next slide. And here we go. All right, the answer is twenty thousand newtons. There's twenty thousand newtons being supported by this block, and the reason is because we have attached this rod to the block. So. Looking at this block, this block here is only supporting the weight of the bridge. And if there was another bridge below it, the rod itself would be supporting any, any bridges below it. That's the way this top bridge used to be. It used to be that the rod was carrying the load from the lower bridge, and the block was only carrying the load from the bridge that was sitting on it. But now with this redesign, now the lower bridge is hanging from that block and that block is supporting the upper bridge. So now there's 20,000 Newtons being supported by this block, and it's only designed to hold 15,000 Newtons. Now, as you've probably figured out, this isn't just a hypothetical, this actually happened. This is the, uh, the Hyatt Hotel in downtown Kansas City in 1980, 1981, July 1981, uh, when I was in high school, actually. Um, this was a real thing. They, they designed and built this hotel, and it turned out to be a very popular spot in downtown Kansas City. And uh, after the hotel opened, they would do dances every Friday night. And every week, more and more people would come to dance in the lobby of the, of the hotel. They had music and drinks and lots of people, and it was great. Um, and uh, there were so many people in here that they started going up on the balconies. And you had uh, large crowds of people standing on the lower balcony uh, dancing. Um, and the load of the, and it was constructed wrong, um, and the load of the, all those people standing on that bridge, dancing, jumping up and down, as it were, was enough to, uh, uh, to make the thing fail. Uh, here is a picture of the upper bridge, um, and as you can see, uh, there's one steel rod here. This is the steel rod that goes up to, um, that actually went down to the lower bridge. Um, and when the thing collapsed, the rod was driven up through it when it hit the floor. This thing here, you can see how the metal is bent upward. This is where the rod, which was fastened to the ceiling, was attached, and it pulled the upper bridge off of the end of that rod. So where it failed was right here on this one. The, the rod kept suspended from the ceiling. Uh, the bridge pulled off the end of that rod. Uh, and that's what we see. So it pulled out of the end of the rod that this rod that was in this hole is still attached to the ceiling while the bridge collapsed. Uh, yeah, huge disaster. This was the, uh, the largest peacetime um, uh, bridge uh, building collapse uh, until 9-11. Um, uh, the 114 people got killed in this and over 200 people were injured. It was a, it was a big story. Um, now, what happened here? Uh, the setup I gave on this was true. Uh, the building was designed to be built like this. The contractor decided to build it like this. Um, now, the contractor thought that this was a good idea. He sent it to the, the building uh, architect and said, is this okay if we do this? The architect said, sure, it looks good to me, but just to be sure, he sent it to the building engineer. And the building engineer looked at it and said, yeah, it looks good to me, but they have to change the permits. So they sent it to the, uh, uh, the city um, a building inspector who looked at it and said, yeah, it looks good to me. But since it's a major, such a major project, they sent it to the state building inspector. The state building inspector said, sure, it looks good to me. And everybody said, yeah, this is fine. And they built it this way. And for a while, it was a mystery why this disaster happened. But a news reporter, a news reporter came in and saw this 
And then he went and he dug up the, the building plans to see if the thing had been built the way it was designed. And he found that the original design was for this with a single rod, but that looking at the wreckage, it had clearly not been built that way. Then they started digging and they figured out, hey, everybody, everybody who should have known this overlooked it. Uh, and it's honestly, it's a little surprising. It's a little counterintuitive, um, but uh, it's something that can be understood by a first year high school uh, physics student. And yet everybody missed this. Uh, one of the lessons that they learned from this is that um, when you have too many people inspecting something and signing off on something, none of them do their job. In this case, there were like six people who looked at it and said, yeah, it's OK. But every single one of them knew that there were five other people. So none of them looked very close at it. They said, hey, if there's a problem, somebody else will catch it. And as a result, nobody caught it. Um, this uh, is a, a very revealing um, uh, case study in, uh, in accident investigation and in, uh, um, in, in safety, uh, designing safe systems. Uh, it turns out that having more redundancy, having more people look at a thing makes it less safe. You're better off with like two, maybe three people looking at a thing because then the, uh, the number of people is so small that those two people know they have to pay attention. They know they have to take it seriously because they're, they're the only one who has a chance to catch it. So we learned a lot from this. Okay, so that was the, uh, the Hilton Hotel in, uh, in Kansas City in 1981. Interesting story.